podcast. This is your boy AD with the other host, Bab and Leo. What's up, fellas? What's up, bro? Hey, what's up, man? And we're here to talk about the 2022 schedule release. The Houston Texans schedule release came out on Thursday. And, you know, we're about to hear, about to break it here to break it down, give our predictions, and, you know, see what we come up with, you know, as far as the record going into the season. And we're also going to talk about a few other things, but, you know, let's go ahead and knock this schedule out. So let's first things first, you know, we'll kind of, you know, go through it and disagree or agree, however, but we'll come to a consensus on, you know, what we predict as a group. Um, So the first things first, the first game of the season is September 11th versus the Indianapolis Colts, the home opener. Yeah. What are you guys thoughts on that? Oh man, <laughs> a tough game. I mean, um, it'll be. Uh, I, I'm gonna just say straight up. I think every every game we play um, will be a tough game that I think we probably have will be competitive in. But um, you know, can I say that? You know, so I think we have a chance to win most of these games. But um, you know, just looking at their roster, it's in a it's in a completely different spot. I think it's just a little bit more established and a little bit deeper. And um, you know, I want to say this will be a tight game, but this is a game I could see us probably losing by two possessions, you know, even if it's at home, you know. Okay. Yeah, so, um, uh, yeah, I, I can see what you mean. I think because we opened the season at home um, against Indianapolis, you know, I guess you know, being a former, like, season ticket holder, I remember week one being just like some of the like loudest the stadium's ever been. Mm -hmm. It's always super hype. They always have a big theme for like the jerseys, you know, like they do the whiteout, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So they they have like a whole theme. They're always handing stuff out to the crowd. Like everyone's there early. Um, And I guess if I kind of go off of what we did last year in week one, um, you know, I'm, the team is going to be better. Like we have a better team this year. And uh, I, I guess I could see us winning it, you know, um, I guess the combination of Matt Ryan uh, s- slowing down a little bit there towards the end of like his tenure with um, the Falcons. Um, now he's no scrub. Uh, he's a, he's a good quarterback, but um, if he's still on that downtrend, um, even with a better roster and a better running game and everything, mm-hmm. um, uh yeah, I, I, I think I could see us winning this one. And in fact, like, like whenever I do my, like my wins and losses, I counted this one as a W. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So just if we were to win a game against the Colts, mm-hmm. this would be the game that we win. Okay. This game is primed for the Texans to take advantage of. And I think when you go back to the, the word continuity with the Houston Texans, which is why you saw a lot of re-signings, a lot of, you know, the same players, same people, you know, in the building. And that's what the Texans have overall, especially at the quarterback position, is mm-hmm. continuity. Whereas with the Colts, they're bringing in a new quarterback, they're bringing in new pieces. The mm-hmm. coaching staff changed, you know, they got a new defensive coordinator. Mm-hmm. Even though he was in the building before, it's still, you know, him, him running his own system may be different from what Eagles ran. So it it may be an opportunity for the Texans because I don't know how much the Colts will play Matt Ryan in the preseason, mm-hmm. where that he gets to jail with the offense, especially learning a new offense, because it's not going to be the same one he ran in Atlanta. So to me, this is an opportunity for the Texans to jump on it and win. Is there a possibility that they win? Yes. Is there a possibility they lose? Yes. Where does it where does it outweigh? You know, you go to these trends and all the type of stuff where the Colts do horrible on week one and yeah. the Texans do great at home on week one. Yeah, that's true. That is so, true. you know, you have these trends. Will this be the year that the trends are flipped? You know, so we don't know, but I, you know, if you were, if the Texans were ever going to, you know, consider this or consider beating the Colts or whatever, taking advantage of it, this would be the game. So I, after thinking about it, you know, because I know we talked about it before, but after thinking about it, I think this would be a game 
that we catch the Colts. You know, it may may not be what we all, you know, thought about, thought it would happen, but I think this will be a game that we catch the Colts and we kind of, you know, start off the season one and oh, similar mm-hmm. to last season. Okay, so let's just – let's count this as a win, you know. Let's count this one as a win. Sounds good. I'll write it down. Mm-hmm. All right, so, so I guess just to, just to kind of put the cherry on top for the, for the Colts game, I guess, you know, we also should explain or, or, or state that, you know, we open the season and close the season with the Colts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, you know, opening the seat, I, I just feel like, you know, being at the stadium and experiencing how emotional it was, it is, especially like being like the, you know, the anniversary of 9-11, mm-hmm. um, like that place gets like really thumping. It'll be mm-hmm. super emotional. Like it'll be loud. The team, like, like you were saying, AD, we are building on something we were starting to develop last year. Mm-hmm. whereas the Colts are starting a new phase of their team, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so we, we, we mark it down. This, you know, as a consensus, we say that the Texans, you know, upset America <laughs> and the world. The Texans <laughs> shocked the world, and, and they and beat the Colts don't. week yeah. once. Yeah. Week one, and now everybody's on the bandwagon with the Texans. You know, Lovey Smith and, and company and Pep Hamilton – Mm-hmm. You know, they're they're on the right track. And then we go into week two. Right. We go into what we presumably a potential bus off with the Denver Broncos, mm-hmm. where you have Russell Wilson playing after playing an emotional game at Seattle in week one, comes in ready to chop heads off in week two yeah. against the Texans in Denver. You know, in that mile high at altitude, you know, in that in that type of environment, you know, so that to me, I think bows itself not well for the Texans. Um, I think that defense on the Broncos is stacked. I think that Russell Wilson is elite, <laughs> and I feel like he has more weapons with the Broncos now than he ever had with Seattle. Mm-hmm. And just giving a guy like Russell Wilson those type of weapons, I, even if Jerry Judy is not there, pending you know legal action and suspension or whatever he's got going on, they still have three other wideouts that are damn good. Right. And you know they Denver secondary is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And for you to try to throw on them is kind of going to be kind of hard. So I don't see. That type of, you know, trajectory, if we were to be competitive or even beat Denver, it would be running the ball. And, you know, that's not something that the Texans were strong at last year. Even with the moves made, we don't know that that'll be gelled enough. The offensive line and running game will be gelled enough to be effective against the Broncos. You know, I would say they're involved in defense at this point in time. So, I feel like with all that being said for me, I think that would be the first loss of the season will be at, at Denver on the road week two. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a game that – another game that I think is going to be tighter than, um, you know, I think uh, predicted. I mean, I, I don't think that we're going to go in there and get blown out. I'm looking at the stats of their, their Russian defense – it seems that it was a pretty, pretty uh, middle of the road in terms of like the yards given up, but they were number one when it comes to rush, rushing touchdowns given up. Obviously, we know that their secondary is really, really good. Um, they were fifth ranked in points per drive. It seems like they were pretty much 25th, 26th when it comes to uh, average, uh, you know, drive length. So, I mean, I think that you can you can move the ball on them, you know. You can move if if we can run the ball on them, then I and keep Davis Mills and our pass, you know, just our our, our offensive line and favorable and receivers all in favorable positions to where they're not having to make long long third down conversions. I think that this is a game that will be that will be able to you know be in a really good position to win. Um, obviously. You know, um, looking at it, I think, again, they have – they're a more established roster than us. 
again, like how AD was saying, you know, this is a team that has a new regime, you know, new quarterback. So this is another winnable game that I think we can win. Um, honestly, crazy as it's enough, I've kind of looked at this different from y'all. I saw us losing this game, the first game, and then winning this game, you know, which, I mean, but uh, I think, you know, if I'm being realistic, I mean, you know, I'm going to say an L, but I think that this, we have a chance. If, if we can run the ball and Mills plays how he played at the end of the year, then I think this is a very winnable game, you know? Yeah, so so if we if we start the season off really strong against the Colts and we have a good showing against them, um, y'all heard that? I just like yeah. pop, I just popped the end of my pen right off. Okay, <laughs> um, um, if we have a good showing against the Colts, um, uh, then when we go up into Denver, it's it, I'm kind of banking on Russell Wilson like being that guy still. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And and uh, you know. If he, you know, if he does what Russell Wilson does against us, then is it pretty easy to put a loss on the column? But when you look at the names on defense, they've got they've got a great secondary and they've got uh, some pretty good edge rushers, right? Yeah. As far as the rest of their front seven, it's just like thrown together. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like really, and that's probably one of the main reasons it's it's uh, relatively easy to run on them, and. Uh, if that trend continues on week one, I'd be interested to see how they do week one mm -hmm. and stopping the run. And if they're getting blown up in the front seven, I could see us really running heavy and Davis Mills just utilizing play action nearly the whole game, but we're counting on stopping Russell Wilson. Yeah. yeah. And, and then, I mean, Javante Williams, right? Yeah. So, I mean, come on. It's going to be tough. And Melvin Gordon. They still got Melvin Gordon there, too. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So, I think I think it's an L. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, they're a better team than Indy. Yeah, and, and just to go on the deciding factor when it comes to that, the difference, if you want to call both of those games toss-ups, mm -hmm. the difference is one is at home. Right. And one is in Denver. Right. Yeah. So. So, we, we cool with putting that one as an L? Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. All right, um, cool. Uh, all right, so all next right. we got we got the Bears, week three Bears at Chicago. Um, I, I I'll kick this off just to change it up a little bit. So with me, man, um, this is a I like Eberflus. Um, I like uh, you know, outside of that, I mean, I, but just like we just said again, you know, new regime, uh, you know, what I'm saying new, you know, everything new. Um, they didn't have a first round pick this year. Justin Fields, you know, what is he going to be? The line is still the same. They lost receivers. They really kind of, they lost Matt. I don't know what's going on with uh, Akeem Hicks, if he'll be back or not. Um, you know, their defense isn't the same, you know. They, obviously, they still have Roquan. You still have uh, Robert Quinn. But, I mean, I'm looking at huh? No, they still have Eddie Jackson. Eddie Jackson, yeah, yeah. And I mean, they, you know, I do like the young corner they have. I've gone blank on his name, but I just feel like they don't have. Um, if it, I mean, I think we're going to be a different type of team this year when it comes to just the approach of running the ball. So I, I feel like we this might be a team that if we didn't out physical the other teams, this should be a team that I think we out physical, and I think that. This doesn't matter that we're playing away. I just feel like this is a game that we should not lose. Like, we should not yeah. lose this game, you know. We shouldn't mm -hmm. lose to any team that is rebuilding, in my opinion, this mm -hmm. year. You know what I'm saying? So, I mark this down as a win. I think this, I think we'll win by, by two possessions. I think we win by 10 points in their house, mm -hmm. you know. Go ahead, AD. Yeah, so with that, I think this is one of the rare cases that I feel like the Houston Texans are more talented than the Chicago Bears. Mm -hmm. this, is one of the, this is one of the instances in the season that the Houston Texans have the clear talent advantage just based on what they brought in in the rookie class and what they brought in in the offseason. I think they, you know, that alone gives them, should give them the win. 
Um, I think, and going back again to continuity, and you know, we don't know what Iberflu sees it in an or wants from an offense. You know, we knew that Nagy was horrible as an offensive coordinator, and you know, we don't know what they have in store or what they want to do with Justin Fields. But other than Justin Fields, that's literally all the Bears have. I mean, they have Cohen, but other than Fields and Cohen, what do they really have on that offense? Can I can I read it off to you real quick, AD? Oh, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, we have Fields, we have David Montgomery. Okay. Right. Um, um, Khalil Herbert, uh, Tristan Ebner, uh, Kari Blasting Game. That's going to be their backfield. Their wide receivers are Darnell Mooney, oh. Byron Pringle, Bellis <laughs> Jones, St. Brown, and David Moore. And then their tight ends. Y'all get a kick out of this. Cole Komet and Ryan Griffin. Mm-hmm. I like Cole Komet, but, yeah. <laughs> we know about Ryan Griffin, so. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, James, James so, so, Tariq Cohen is not on the team. Where did Tariq Cohen go? I wonder. I forgot. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure. I, I know that Montgomery is a, a, a very good running back. Yeah, he's a good running back. I, the tandem between him and Cohen was what made them – kind of an elite, you know, because you didn't have a drop-off between either one of those guys. But if mm-hmm. Cohen is not there anymore, then they're going to be struggling. And yeah. the, the fact that he really doesn't have a reliable go-to number one target, then that's mm-hmm. going to be a problem. That's going to be a struggle. It's almost like they're setting up. Turn it goes back up. to what we talked about as well is that those teams that – in the spaces we talked about, those teams that want to tank. Mm-hmm. I think the Chicago Bears are setting themselves up to be a team that wants to tank, so to get, I, you know, to get yeah, out. I think another thing, like, their their edge room is pretty good. Robert Quinn, uh, Travis Gibson. Um, and then you take a look at, you know, like, their cornerbacks are Jalen Johnson and Kyler Gordon. Yeah. Uh, Kyler Gordon. I, you know, I, I love Kyler Gordon. And then um, in the safety room is Eddie Jackson and ja- uh, Jaquan Brisker. That's pretty damn good. You so know, they got two rookies so, in the secondary. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. You know, it's it's going to be similar to us. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Really similar to us, but it's not very Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and it's not Petrie, but I think we have the yeah. we have the better weapons to take advantage mm-hmm. of a young secondary compared to what they have to take advantage of a young secondary. Yeah, yeah. I none think of those receivers you name scare me or make me feel any type of way that Stingley's going to be extremely challenged to a point you know, where they may have to take them off the field type of situation. Yeah, Chicago might be a game where we see Stingley uh, completely eliminate whoever's lined up across from him, you mm-hmm. know? Um, okay. I, I, yeah, I think W. Yeah. Yeah, everybody's going with the, with the win against the Bears. Cool. Okay. Week four. Yeah, so, so we're going to go to Los Angeles Chargers now. Yeah. Um... Go ahead, Bab. Okay, so with the Los Angeles Chargers, you know, uh, uh, the consensus for um, the in, in the t- in the Texan spaces amongst Texans fans is, you know, uh, one of the one of the main things that is uh, brought up is, hey, we beat the Chargers last year. We did it. We beat the Chargers last year. <laughs> we are not playing even remarkably the same Chargers team right here in Week Four. Um, if they're all healthy, this will be one of the worst ass whoopings we will receive all season. Like <laughs> he's saying, it's Buffalo Bill is from last year. I mean, I mean, it. We, I, we probably won't be able to move the ball much. Mm-hmm. It might be the game where we finally get to tell the Texans fans that Titus Howard isn't shit. Um, <laughs> Because uh, they're just going to send everybody right off of Titus Howard. You know, they're just mm-hmm. going to tee it up, you know. Um, goodness. I mean, um, Kenyon Green's going to have his hands full. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? It's just going to be a mess. Um, I just think their defense, you know, Derwin James will be healthy. Khalil Mack, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Uh, Bosa, like, it, their corners, you know what I'm saying? Their young corners, like, that's. Mm-hmm. They have yeah, they yeah, they added Jason Jackson. Yeah, I mean, like, dude. Samuel. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a tough one. 
I, I think we're going to just get road graded, man. It's going to be an embarrassing loss at home. Mm -hmm. um, we will want to run the ball, and we'll see it really early that the Texans will try to run the ball. And we'll probably do pretty good, but after they put two touchdowns on our heads, we're going to try to pass it. And Davis Mills is probably just going to – probably just going to get run through, you know? Mm -hmm. But I think it's a no. Yeah. 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 I, I, I don't – Go ahead. It's not much to really discuss. I mean, if, if you pay paying any attention, the Chargers, you know, they were good last year and they only got even more better. And, you know, yeah. as good as they are, they added pieces on their defense. You know, they re-signed Mike Williams. They kept Austin Eckler. You know, they still have weapons around. Still got Keenan Allen you know, who's underrated and I talked about as a, you know, damn good possession receiver. And, you know, I feel like Herbert has all the weapons he needs, right. um, you know, and, and, and the defense is, is going to be great. So I think, you know, other than that, I don't think that's even a conversation about, you know, can they be competitive in the game? Maybe, but will they win the game? No. <laughs> and so, you know, I think it's pretty open and shut. I think this is a game that, uh, you know, I think they took that loss personally last year. I mean, mm -hmm. hence the fact that obviously they still believe in Herbert. They go out and they beef up the defense. They beef up, you know what I'm saying? Like, they they, they also add a piece to their offensive line in Zion Johnson. Um, they, they're just an overall better team. And this will be a game, like, they feel like, you know, this was the game that really – I mean, kind of ended their season, you know, obviously, yeah. they, you know, um, they, they had another late loss. And I mean, this game really was the game that Oakland gave, I mean, the Raiders, you know, like a chance to even be in playoff contention. So um, if there was a game that I think that we might get 40 to 50 points hung on our heads, it would be this one. But again, I'm going to just, you know, be the devil's advocate and say that there's things that I don't like about their team. You know, I think that that, you know, as good as Joey Bosa is, I feel like, you know, we should be able to run on them. You know, I, you know, I think that they're not, that they weren't really the most physical team, you know, I mean, you know, and, but I do like their DBs, you know, and I, I think Khalil Mack still has a lot to be in the, in the tank. So like Bab said, I think this is a game that, you know, we will try to run the ball on them. Uh, I feel like, I feel like, you know, fuck it. I'm not even going to go there. I think this is the game that we lose. This is a three-possession loss. This is a three-possession loss game. So, I'm thinking we lose this game by 17, you know? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Okay, hey, so let's take one short intermission just real quick.